underway with the Winner's Gold Trophy Shop kickoff. Steubenville Catholic Central won the toss. They deferred, so Belair will get the ball to start things off. Mickey Bednar kicks it off for the Crusaders, and we are underway. Belair fields a kick back at the five-yard line. I just think he stepped out of bounds, and he did. Yes, he did, Don. He stepped out of bounds. I'll tell you, that's, that's about the six-yard line, six or seven-yard line. Looked like the ball was going to go out of bounds, but he fielded it, and when he fielded it, his uh, left foot was uh, outside the uh, the sideline. So it'll be first and 10 for Belair inside their own 10-yard line. Ryan Feller, the quarterback for the Big Reds, running backs, Tyler Barnes and Trevor Bobka, receivers Ty Tabisic, Tyler Rose, and Anthony Hawker. The line, Bobby Bennett, Josh Lancione, Buddy Foster, Andrew Crow, and Eli Gillespie. Belair will operate out of the gun. This is Feller. Handoff. Bobka picks up a couple on that first down carry. Trevor Bobka had two key touchdown grabs last week. Toby Longo on the tackle for Central. Central. The defense for Central as we see them in the huddle. Zach Costello, big number 54, leading the way. He is at middle linebacker, Palma Fletcher. And Josh Koslow leading the way on that offensive line. Pass knocked down on second down. will bring up third and short. But the bad field position here for Bel Air really uh, costing them out of the gate. The big thing that Central is concerned about defensively, Don, has been their pass defense uh, last week against Edison. Edison had a great deal of success throwing the ball against uh, Catholic Central's corner, so I know that Coach Bain has worked on that real hard this week. Trips stop side, Feller under pressure, he eludes it, gets it off, and it is incomplete. It'll bring up a punting situation, but a very good pass rush on behalf of the uh, Crusaders, and Feller lucky he didn't get sacked for the safety. He showed uh, some pretty good escapability there to even get that pass off. Well, I tell you, he, uh, there were two shots that Central had on him, uh, one of them in the end zone. But, you know, give credit to the central secondary on that one. That was more of a coverage, uh, uh, you know, a sack more than anything else or a coverage incompletion. Uh, a good job by the central secondary having all of Blair's receivers covered fairly well. Tyler Rose punting out of his own end zone. And the Crusaders will try to set up the return. Sean Harlan, excellent special teams tackle by Jake Kamsky for the Big Reds. So Central will have its first offensive possession inside Central Ter inside Bel Air territory at the 44-yard line. And the man that makes things go offensively for the Crusaders, Mickey Bednar. He is their running back and the uh, big play performer. The Bednar, Johnny DiCarlo, the quarterback, Matt Roberts to the fullback, Emerling. Harlan and Longo, your receivers. Elson, Costco, Yemeni, Costco, and Yonda, your line. The Carlo is going to run with it, and he's going to be brought down. Went back to pass, nothing there. He tucked it and kept it, and uh, he'll be lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Josh Lancio on the stop for the Big Reds of Bel Air. Melman, Crow, Gillespie, Lancione, and Parson, your line. Canner, Manning, and Honeywell, your backers. Rose, Davis in the secondary, along with Kyle Johnson. Offside, Bel Air. Big number 66 for Bel Air defensive right tackle. It's Josh Lancione, 6'1", 250 pound tackle. Moved a prior to the snap, got into the uh, neutral zone, so it's gonna cost uh, Belair a five-yard penalty. On that first play that Central ran, they ran twins to the right. Uh, they had Bednar set as a right halfback. They ran both wide receivers on slants and tried to get Bednar uh, into the flat, but uh, DiCarlo didn't have time to, to pick out his receiver. Second and five, Joey Zapolnik, your fullback, and Zapolnik takes the handoff, and actually it's Matt Robinson, and Robinson gets down to the 35-yard line. It's going to bring up a third and short, probably about two, maybe one. Uh, so we'll see what uh, Coach Bain comes up here, comes up here with on third down. If they don't make it, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it on fourth down, Don. Sharp, Sean Harlan checks in for Central. Hit a big touchdown grab in last week's game. I set 
Robinson, your fullback. Bednar, your tail. Backhand off to Bednar. Fights his way off that left side. Mickey Bednar with the first down for the Crusaders down to the 27-yard line. Nice block on the left side by number 70, Josh Coslow. Got some movement on, uh, on the left side. Bednar was able to find a crack. Here it is from ground level on the EM Media replay. And uh, Bednar just keeps his, those feet moving and is able to get it upfield for a first down on about the 27. And uh, there's another look at it from a little bit higher. Same results, first down Catholic Central. Keith Saponic and Emerling down to the bottom of your screen, flags. Well, we're gonna see who this is gonna be called on because uh, Toby Longo, the tight end, also moved. So we're gonna see who moved first. Belair. The offside against Belair. Again, someone on that right side of that Belair defensive line, just a little too anxious you know, to make penetration. We're going to take a look at it here. There you can see number 66. Again, moving a little bit too early. That's Lancion, and he's anxious to get in there, but I'm sure Coach Boner is going to tell him, you know, you got to move on movement. Don't move on sound. Good. It was a good hard count by DeCarlo. Yep. You can see that on the replay. That's what threw him off. All right. That Matt Robinson and Robinson should have another first down as he's down inside the 15 yard line. That'll move the sticks for Coach Greg Bain's Crusaders. That offensive line for Catholic Central is doing a fairly good job right now. Uh, number 71, that's uh, Matt Yonda, uh, did a good job of coming off the ball, getting, giving Robinson some running room inside. So uh, another first down for Catholic Central. Ball's on the 15-yard line. And they're in the Hollywood City Center red zone. First down play. Little stretch to the short side. Bednar. And he gets to about the five-yard line. And, and that's the story coming in. It's Belair's a passing team. What can Central Secondary do against that? and the running game, the strength of the Catholic Central offense. Watching the game with Buckeye Local down here a couple weeks ago, that would be your question with Bel Air, their ability to stop the run. This is Bednar on the stretch play, and there's some nice blocking on the right side. You see a nice block from the inside out on a Bel Air defender, and Bednar is able to get it down inside the five. This is Bednar again, cuts it inside, touchdown Central. <laughs> Nice effort by the uh, Catholic Central offensive line coming off the ball against a much bigger uh, defensive front. And a good job by the left side. Almost exclusively running to the left too, Don. And remember last week they came out with a lot of that Wheeling Central spin series. Didn't see that, just straight ahead uh, Central Power football today. Absolutely. Bednar will kick the extra point. But once again, special teams, trouble handling that, that opening kickoff. Bel Air had bad position, field position. Central on a short field and took advantage. High snap, they get the placement down, the kick is no good. We take the break with Central leading by the count of 6 nothing. You're watching the WTOB9 High School Football Game of the Week from Nelson Field in Bel Air. Welcome back to Nelson Field. It is homecoming today at the home of the Bel Air Big Reds as they host the Catholic Central Crusaders Wintersville Trophy Shop kickoff. Mickey Bednar has it teed up for Central. Back deep, Tyler Barnes for the Big Reds. Kick will be fielded by Eric Canner. He gets to the 15, Canner to the 20, and out around the 25 yard line, nice return. So uh, Bel Air for their second possession will have a, a little bit, not great field position, but definitely better than where they started on their first possession. Right, they started inside their five yard line on their first possession. This time they have a little more operating room there at their own 25. So, you know, Coach Boner now can uh, probably open up the offense a little bit. And they do open it up. Uh, Ty Tabisic, Levi Crozier, Anthony Hawker, uh, all three with a nice, a uh, number of catches and receiving yards this year for the Big Reds. They've got Hawker split to the bottom. Crozier to that side as well. Rolling, Feller, nobody there. He's in trouble, unloads it, 
and it is caught for a short pickup, but excellent pressure by Roland Fletcher of the Crusaders, and on the coverage was Keith Zapolnik. He was looking to roll out to this side and find Anthony Hawker, who was completely covered. I'll tell you that, you know, Central has got a good rush early in the game. I'm sure the Belair's gonna make some adjustments, uh, you know, to their to their blocking. Uh, you know, they'll be able to pick it up. Uh, Central in there with a uh, with a four-man line, sometimes a three-man line. Now they're up there with a four-man defensive front. Tyler Rose split to the bottom, tight to Besick, top side, hand off Barnes, off that top side, and not much there for Bel Air. Mickey Bednar over on the tackle. He was joined by Roland Fletcher. That was a good job by Mickey Bednar because he, he squeezed down the running lane to where there wasn't a lot of room for the ball carrier to make his cut. Uh, held it to a very short gain of about two yards, so it's going to bring up third and about eight. There you see it, National City score bar, Central six, Bel Air nothing. Hawker split down to the near side, two sidecars to the top is Levi Crozier. Feller looking for Hawker all the way. He's got two steps to the defender, makes the catch, and Hawker down to the 17-yard line. A big pass play for the Bel Air Big Reds. Right, boy, I tell you, what a nice job by Hawker. He focused on the ball. He beat the, he beat the uh, central cornerback. That was John Murray. Got behind him, and uh, Feller was able to deliver a strike. Great catch. Catches the ball right on his fingertips, and uh, here it is right here. Nice pitch and catch, as you can see right here, and Hawker takes it down inside the 20 to about the 8, uh, about the 17-yard line of Central. You can see he, he turned on the Jets and, uh, and got past the defender. Nice catch on the, on the fingertips for Hawker. Feller dumps it out, and the catch is made for the Big Reds, and that is Devin Parson. And number 12 came up. Uh, that's Johnny DiCarlo playing a safety position. Came up, made the tackle, but not after, not until after a gain of about five. So it'll bring up second and five at about the 12 of Catholic Center. And the Big Reds in the Hollywood City Center red zone. Anthony Hawker checks into the game. Hawker splits near side along with Levi Crozier. Now they'll make that a trip set with Tyler Barnes joining them as well. Feller looking to keep it. Kind of weaves his way down to the six yard line. Yeah, he's going to be close to a first down. A Feller in the mold of some of those uh, really outstanding uh, Bel Air quarterbacks, Rocchio and uh, Davis uh, brothers, and so on. Uh, threat to not only throw the ball, but to run the ball as well. So this will be a first and goal from the six. Barnes, your tailback. Devin Parson, your fullback. And this is Barnes. And he's in there. Touchdown, Bel Air. I'll tell you, that was a big, big score for Bel Air. They had to come back and uh, you know, show that they can move their offense after having the punt on their first series. And a real nice drive, of course, you know, capped by uh, the big pass from Feller to uh, Anthony Hawker. Here it is from ground level. Good strong running, good push by the right side of that offensive line of Belair. That is the fourth rushing touchdown for Tyler Barnes on the season. Lights on the play. Let's see what the call is going to be. Dead ball. Illegal procedure against uh, Belair, so that's going to move him back five. So what would have been a 20-yard extra point is now going to become about a 25-yard extra point. Ross Fuller will kick it. Tyler Rose played quarterback for the Big Red Sum last year. He's the holder. And this kick is no good. So a pair of missed extra points. And we were tied at six. We expected a good one. And we are off to a good start. The Vapor Jet scoreboard. Bel Air and Catholic Central all tied up. You're watching the WTOB9 High School Football Game of the Week. And we were back set for the kickoff. Game tied at six. Let's quickly go down to the sidelines with Haley Call. Thanks, Don and Rich. I'm down here on the Catholic Central sidelines where I've got Hayden Daly. And he's in charge of keeping the, all the players hydrated. 
Now, Hayden, is it your favorite time when it's the summertime and you guys are practicing, or do you like game days better? Game days. Why do you like game days? Because I get to see some action, and I don't know what else. <laughs> Great. All right, thanks, Hayden. John and Rich, back to you. Haley, is, is, that, is Steve his dad? Is that Steve? I think that's Steve Daly's. Could be. The athletic director. There's the kickoff, so Catholic Central with a football. Steve Daly's done an excellent job since uh, coming over and being the athletic director for Central and former head coach. He was head coach down at Bel Air St. John, had some nice teams down there. Next week, WTOV9 Game of the Week will feature the Shadyside Tigers and the Barnesville Shamrocks following Sports Friday. The Carlo out of the gun. Robinson, the sidecar. Man goes in motion. A little option going that way. And DeCarlo's going to keep it. And he gets out to the 28-yard line. That's a good, solid gain on first down for Catholic Central. Uh, you know, if you can get four yards on first down, it's a win. Well, I thought he had more than, uh, the, the least had four, but we're going to call it a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. And uh, Central now... Uh, on their second possession, showing a little bit of spread formation uh, with uh, DiCarlo in the shotgun instead of underneath the center. Now they've got the double wings. And remember, they did run some of that spinner series last week. Here comes Mickey Bednar. And Bednar to the 30. Good inside-out pursuit that time by uh, Bel Air number 10, Levi Crozier. Uh, I think was the, the tackler on that. Uh, they're trying to run that power off tackle. And uh, as I said, good inside out pursuit by, uh, by Belair. Held that to a very short gain of maybe two, so it'll bring up third and about five. Sean Harlan to the bottom, Jake Emerling top side. Robinson the sidecar next to Johnny DiCarlo. They're looking for Harlan on the slant. Pass Ooh. is incomplete. Good coverage from Ty Tabisic and Dylan Garlow. And I'll tell you, two defenders right there trying to run the slant pattern uh, to Harlan. Uh, just wasn't there. So it'll bring up fourth and about four. Here we're going to see it right here. Carlo trying to thread the needle, but too much coverage for the uh, the wide receiver. Here it is from ground level. And good coverage, as you can see, by the Belair linebacker and corner. Toby Longo on the punt it away. Good snap. And Longo's punt will hit it to 45. Take a huge Crusader bounce. And will roll down to the 22-yard line. A good punt from the foot of Toby Longo with the help of a nice bounce. And Bel Air will start on its own 21-yard line. Kevin logged on to the WTOB9.com high school football chat. What are you waiting on? It's each and every Tuesday night at 8, from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock. I'm joined by a coach each week and the Ohio Valley sports doctor, John Simonson, as we uh, go through all the numbers and crunch down things for the playoff watch. Email your questions to sports at WTOB.com. Sports at WTOB.com. Uh, last week we had Big Red head coach Reno Sakosh. Upcoming guests will include Indian Creek head coach Andrew Connor, Mark Nardoni, head coach of Wheeling Park. High school football chat each and every Tuesday night from 8 until 9. This is online only on WTOB9.com. There you get a good look at the huddle for Catholic Central. And they were concerned about the pass coming in, and the big pass play is what hurt them on that first. Yeah, position. absolutely. And uh, you know that's that's been a concern all year. Uh, you know, we go back to the Columbiana game at the beginning of the season, Don, and uh, Columbiana hurt them with the pass. Uh, the second game of the season against Wheeling Central, they hit some big passes on them as well. And uh, then of course uh, Edison, uh, you know, had a, had a big night throwing the football as well. So they've been working really, really hard on their pass defense and. Uh, then, then, of course, give up the big play, but a perfect play uh, from Feller to, uh, to Hawker. Feller in a gun. Did you see that lady's hat? That was a great hat. Feller. 
Down the middle, Hawker's got a step. Pass interference. Hawker had two steps on the defender and really they had no choice but to, to, to interfere or that would have ended up being a touchdown. To John Murray, uh, number 81, uh, the defensive back uh, was uh, was the one guilty of the pass interference. Here it is right here, a little bootleg action, going one way, coming back the other, and uh, well-thrown ball. Hawker again had a step or two on uh, on a right corner. Here it is from another angle on the M Media replay, and definitely uh, pass interference uh, by the uh, defensive back for Catholic Center. Yeah, the defender never never did look for the football. I set. Hand off, Canner. Mickey Bednar with a big stick. Good defense by Catholic Central that time, able to defend the perimeter. Also number 42 over there, Justin Mosty. Doing a good job, but Bednar's the one that comes up and puts a big hit uh, on the running back from uh, Belair. Belair doing a good job of mixing it up. Uh, you know, running the ball, passing the ball, play action, passing. So, you know, they have a good game plan coming in right now. Anthony Hawker checks in the game. He splits down to the bottom. Dylan Garlow goes topside. They're going to hand it off to Barnes. And Barnes breaking tackles. He's got the first down out near midfield. And you hear so much about the uh, about the Bel Air passing attack. And there was a good run. Actually, that was uh, Bobka. Trevor Bobka with the carry. Here it is, looks like he's pinned in there, but he breaks a couple of tackles, as you can see, and is able to get it upfield for the first down. Good, strong run by number 21, Trevor Bobka. Nice block also by a pooling lineman from Belair, and uh, good job by Bobka getting some positive yards. That was 55, Eli Gillespie that came up with the block. Good job, Eli. Trevor Bobka to the sidecar. Pass is complete to Tyler Rose, a first down into Central Territory at the 34-yard line. That time Central came with a three-man rush, defended with eight. Feller had an awful lot of time to throw. You can see there's no white jerseys in the picture at all. Nice pattern by number three, Tyler Rose, for another first down for Belair inside the 35 of Catholic Central. And Ryan Feller was our WTOB9 Athlete of the Week this week. An excellent job. They were down 14-3. Last week at the half against St. Clairsville, he threw three second half touchdown passes. Draw! The draw. Not much doing there. Central stopping the draw. Eric Canner on the carry for the Big Reds, getting up to the bottom of the pile. Zach pile Coslo. Zach Coslo. And that's one thing, uh, draws and, uh, and screens that will slow down that pass rush. Uh, you can see number 43, Robinson was the first one to get there. Uh, and get a hand on the, the ball carrier. Threw for a loss of maybe two, it'll bring up second and 12. Feller, top side, Tyler Rose, playing pitch and catch, and he should be out to the 25 yard line, out near the uh, first down marker. Number 21, Keith Zapolnik defending over there, making the tackle. You can just see it's a hitch pattern. He runs down, pushes off the defender, then pulls up at about 10 or 12 yards deep. Here it is from uh, ground level. Good job of looking the ball into his hands, making the catch, and then turning and trying to run. It's going to bring up third and pretty short here by less than a yard. Canner in the backfield along with Vodka. Feller will run it too, third and short. I expect him to keep it on the ground here. High snap, but they go up top. Catch is made tight to Besick. And to Besick, breaks tackles down inside the 10 to the 6. First down for Bel Air. And, 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 and tackling issues, they've been a problem for this defense. Yeah. That time, uh, you know, this tackle uh, you know, still would have been a first down. And it's the same pattern that, uh, you know, that Tobacek ran a little bit ago, or, or the uh, receiver on that side ran a little bit ago and uh, was able to bring it up. Watch it, Zach Koslow, the middle linebacker. Yep. Excellent pursuit, showing his speed. Yeah, he could have given up on a play, being that it was out of his area, but he got over there, tried to get in coverage, and made the tackle. Feller rolling near side. Unloads it wide open. Touchdown for the Bel Air Big Reds, Dylan Garlow. <laughs> it 
And we're going to take a look at it, a little play action again. And again, they have a pretty good heat on him, but they can't, can't get him. He's able to pull up, make the throw to a wide open number 20 for Belair Dylan Garlow. Snap, placement, and the kick is up, and it is good. So another touchdown on the board for the Bel Air Big Reds, and Bel Air leading it by a count of 13-6. 36 seconds to go here in the first quarter from Nelson Field. The Big Reds, two possessions, two touchdowns, and uh, Ryan Feller looking pretty impressive. Coach, I thought he showed a lot of patience on that play. I mean, he, he had he had heat in front of him, patiently found the guy, and, and the receiver, Garlow, found the open spot, settled down in there, and made the catch. The Ryder Cup continues from Louisville, Kentucky. Tune in to see who ends up with the trophy. The U.S., will they be able to take back the title this year? Tune in to WTOB9 tomorrow at noon. It is the Ryder Cup. And it's at Valhalla in Louisville, Kentucky this year. Well, we'll see what uh, Central can do on our third possession of this, uh, this first half. Uh, first time they took the ball, they were able to run the ball fairly well out of the, uh, their patented eye formation. Second series, they went to the spread and uh, sort of bogged out a little bit, had to kick it away, and then Belair came, comes back and scores. Here's the kickoff, Joseph Bain. Nice return out to the 37-yard line, so good field position for the Crusaders to start this possession. But Belair can and will score, yeah. and, 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 and they're gonna have to score some points. I know if Sunker, you're looking, keep you on the ground, chewing up the clock, limiting their possessions, but the three, uh, three and outs, no doubt. That's, that's, not, that's not gonna do it. They have to take time off the clock, they have to control the ball. Whoa, Bednar, good stop for Bel Air. They had three defenders there among them. Devin Parson, also over on the stop for the Big Reds, Josh Lancione. And you could hear that hit all the way up here. Trying to run the blast play over the uh, the right side. Uh, just wasn't there, somebody missed a block, and Lancione came in untouched. The loss of a yard on the play brings up second down. Bednar dotting that eye behind Matt Robinson. Johnny DiCarlo and the slant pass is tipped, tipped at the line of scrimmage. I mean, you saw where Emily got bumped into, but the pass was tipped, Hello, so all right. bets are off. And I'll tell you, had that ball not been tipped, I think it would have been right on the money. Emerling had uh, the inside position on that defensive back, and uh, I think that's gonna bring us to the end of the first quarter, Don. An exciting first quarter to watch Bel Air leading Superville Central 13-6 on the Vapor Jet scoreboard. You're watching the WTOB9 High School Football Game of the Week. WTOB9 High School Football Game of the Week between Steubenville Catholic Central and Bel Air. Brought to you in part by the Health Plan. Belmont Savings Bank. The Ogden Easy to Use Big Book. And West Liberty State College. A sunny, sun-splashed afternoon at Nelson Field in Bel Air. Homecoming day for the Bel Air Big Reds. Let's check things out on the sideline with Haley Call. Thanks, Don. Yes, I am down here on the sidelines with your complete coverage, but now the Steubenville Catholic Central Varsity Cheerleaders are going to show you a little bit of that big blue spirit. Go ahead, girls. Key third down play here for Central DiCarlo. Unloads the pass intended for Mickey Bednar. It is incomplete. And on the coverage, Joe Honeywell for the Big Reds. Yeah, this is exactly what we talked about at the end of the first quarter, Don. Central can't afford to go three and out, turn the ball over to Belair. And they'll probably get the ball in, in pretty decent field position here. And when they do kick it away and the defense comes on a field, it's very, very important that they not let Belair score on this next series of downs that Belair will have. Toby Longo on the punt. Maybe some pressure coming from this near side for the Reds, and here they come. Lock is picked up. Nice Longo, kick. nice high punt. Eric Canner calls for the fair catch. 
And Central, if they can get on it, I don't think they did. I, I think Belair think did covered either. it up. There's another Belair uh, receiver back there to receive the punt. I think he got on it and, and recovered it. But it looked like Central was going to get on it, just wasn't able to get it. So Belair averts a, uh, a big, big mistake here and averts a turnover. They'll have the ball at their own 25-yard line. We saw a similar play last week in the game with Edison, and, and these guys go for the fair catch. You still got to catch it. Still got to catch it. That's right. And alertly, alertly, Casey Davis with a huge recovery. First right. quarter highlights on the ground. Mickey Bednar touchdown. Central's first possession. And on the ground, Tyler Barnes with Big Reds. Then the touchdown pass to Dylan Garla. That's where we stand in the second quarter. Swing. Levi Crozier, and Crozier brought down from behind, and making the tackle Mickey Bednar, but another good gain on first down for the Big Reds. That's a, that's a gain of about eight yards so on first down, so it puts him in a second and, uh, and short situation. This is now they can play with. They can go deep. They can maybe go for the home run here, uh, and then come back on third down and try to get the first down. So we'll see what uh, Coach Boner decides to do here. And it behooves the central defense to, to really tighten up here. And Hawker's not in. He's been their deep threat. Tyler Barnes kind of picks his way, and he does. He's going to be close. Be close. Be close. 35. He may have it. Well, if, he, if they spot him over the 35, he'll have the first down. And so it all depends if they get a left or a right foot spot. They're going to give him the first down. And Tyler Barnes entered today 250 yards rushing and three touchdowns. He's got one touchdown already, his fourth of the year. And, and, and that's one thing, watching this Beller offense, they're showing the ability to run the football. Yeah. And I think that they have to do that so that, uh, you know, when, they, when defenses, you know, have to defend their spread when they're three, four, five receivers, you know, they should be able to run the football. First and 10, Hawker split all the way up to the top. They throw to the underneath man, Crozier, and Crozier's got another first down. They set twins to the top side coach with Hawker and Crozier, Hawker cleared out, Crozier ran a little curl and they right. nailed him. And uh, you know, Central's only coming with three or four uh, you know, rushers and that's giving Feller an awful lot of time to uh, pick out his receivers. And those little short hitch patterns are really uh, you know, doing some damage to that Central defense. And size-wise, that's the matchup to watch too. Hawker's 6'2", that time they had him covered with Keith Saponic who's 5'9", right. and, and Central's got to find somebody that's going to be able to match up with, with Hawker. Well, it's not going to happen because most of their guys are, you know, six foot or under, so we don't have any of those tall uh, you know, defenders at Catholic Central High School that uh, are able to cover those tall receivers. Where the, where, where the, the, the thing has to turn around on is, is the rush. They, get, they have to get a better rush on the quarterback, put him in situations where he's going to have to hurry his throws, and so far, Belair has done a good job of protecting their quarterback after the first or second series. We're in the third year of the Big Season Sports WTOV9 Health Plan Big 22. You can vote for your top, who you feel are the top 22 players in the Ohio Valley. We cap things off with an awards banquet at Wheeling Island in December. And there you go, WTOV9.com. Cast your vote who you think should be on the Big 22 list or who you should think should be the player of the year, the Big 22. Go to WTOV9.com and vote today. First down play. Feller tied to Bisek. And to Bisek fights for the extra yardage, gets the first down out near the 40, and uh, just comes off the line of scrimmage hard, stops, comes back, and come back route. Put it on the money, and uh, there's another first down for the Big Reds. And uh, they've run that play maybe a half a dozen times so far, at least three times on their last touchdown drive. And that's because the defensive back, the left defensive corner for Central is giving him a lot of cushion. So they're pushing him, pushing him off and then, you know, just hitching up about six or seven yards deep and giving their receivers an opportunity to run with the ball after the catch. So first and 10, they've got Hawker up to the top side. It's part of a trip set. Barnes, the inside man, Crozier in the middle. They're looking for the quick little screen to Crozier. Ball on the ground, and Belair gets on it. They were looking to throw the screen to the yep. middle man to the top, Crozier, and there were a lot of heat in the face of Feller. He tucks it down to run with it, fumbles it, but a good recovery for the Big Reds. Right, and the ball, bounce, ball bouncing very, very well right now for Belair. 
you know that's two fumbles that they've had on this uh, this possession beginning with the with the punt and uh, they've been able to recover both of them so their guys are in the right place at the right time and good hustle by that Belair offense. Devin Parson on the recovery excellent camera shots on both of those. Boy yeah. the first one that ball looked like a beach ball it looked so big. But they gained around. about four yards on that. Feller Zach Coslow pursuing he unloads pass is tipped goes incomplete. Zach, uh, the good rush for the Crusaders Zach Coslow and then Vicky Bednar I believe man, they got a, might have got a hand on I it. I think you're right. I think it was Bednar. Here it is, the rush by Coslo, uh, forces him out of the pocket, and then just good effort by uh, Mickey Bednar to get his hand up and get a hand on the ball. Mickey Bednar is only 5'11", but he got up like he was six foot four. Yeah. He picked off a pass like that last week as well. He does an excellent job leaping, coming from that outside backer spot. Pass incomplete. And Matt Robinson this time with the pressure on Feller. And I think that's what Central has to do. Feller, you can't let Feller just stand in the pocket and pick out his receivers because he's an excellent pocket passer. You give him the time, he'll pick you apart. But if you can get a little pressure on him and make him hurry his throws before the uh, receivers can get into their cuts, you know, that's going to be an advantage to that Central defense. Timeout on the field. 9.08 to go first half. A fourth down coming up for Bel Air, and we'll take a timeout along with the guys of the field. Vapor Jet scoreboard, Bel Air 13, Central 6. We'll be back after this. And we are back, and they are banging the drums on the far side of the line here at homecoming at Bel Air. The Big Reds facing a fourth and five. Before the break, Superville Central called timeout. Key play here. They don't want to go down two scores. Correct. And uh, you know, the ball's inside the 40-yard line at, a, at about the 37 of Catholic Central. And they're going for it on fourth and five. Two receivers to the top, tied to Besick. They're looking to him, down, out, and up to Besick on the bottom. And to Besick somehow makes the catch. Touchdown, Bel Air. Ted, there were two central defenders there, and the ball was in there just like dropping a penny down a well. You know, great concentration. Uh, by the uh, Bel Air receiver here. You're going to see it from the ground level. And two two defenders there, splits both of them, makes the catch in for it. Here's another look at it from the uh, M Media replay. Nice throw by Feller. And again, he had, to, he had the time to sit in there and throw the ball very, very successfully. Excellent pass by Feller. And the extra point by Fuller is good. So the Bel Air Big Reds. Put seven more on the board. And they lead it by an account of 20 to six. And I'll tell you what, Ryan Feller look, looking pretty impressive. Central had that covered. The safety yeah, came over safety to help. Came over. And, and to BC had a step, just a step. But Feller, like he's perfect, perfect analogy, throw. dropping a penny in a while. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly what he did. And you know, to give the receiver a lot of credit, you know, it wasn't a real uh, fancy uh, pattern, but he, he focused and concentrated on the ball. To the sidelines and Haley Call. Thanks, Don. Yes, we are down here on the sidelines tracking all the points that are on the scoreboard. Big Red right now on top with 20 and with Central not, well, kind of far behind at six, but I'm sure they'll come back. Um, back to you guys. WTOB9.com, your high school super site for everything you want to know about high school football. Log on today and check it out video of your team's games, rosters, schedules, and a whole lot more. Tyler Barnes set to kick it away for the Big Reds. Nikki Bednar back deep along with Murray. And John Murray trying to find his team. He gets to the 30. Fumbles the ball. Fumbled it, and it will go out of bounds. So Central keeps possession right around the 38-yard line. John Murray on the return for the Crusaders who need to get something going offensively on this possession. Yeah, they have to do something, Don, either you know, string some uh, first stats together. We're going to take a look at John Murray's return here. First of all, he's carrying the ball real, real loose. He's carrying it in the wrong arm, and uh, Belair's uh, defenders slap it away, but fortunately it goes out of bounds. John Murray's going to be a good football player. He's learning, 
and he's got great speed and he'll be a good addition to the central offense. Bednar the wing in motion. No, direct snap to Matt Robinson and, and this is going out of that Wheeling Central playbook. Right. Nice gain and it'll bring up second and short. The direct snap and, and they ran this effectively last week against Edison. So this is something that, that has been uh, you know, newly added to the central offense. Uh, you know, they haven't been working uh, with it for too long of a time, but uh, you know, they're, we're, we're starting to see more and more of it as, uh, as the season goes along. Gain of six, call it second and four. Motion man. Run a little uh, quick option this way, and DiCarlo keeps it. It'll be about a yard short. Number 62 for Bolera. It's Andrew Crow did a good job of coming over uh, from his defensive line position, playing very, very well laterally coming down the line, making the tackle. It's going to be short. It's going to bring up third and about one. Here it is, and it uh, looks like uh, you know trying to run the option, but it's run all the way by DiCarlo. He finds a little seam, gets it upfield for a good positive gain. Big down right here. Crusaders really need a first down. Now they earn the wishbone. Joey Zaponik, he's got the first down. Good run by Zaponik out to midfield. Good strong run by Zaponik. That's uh, you know, central short yardage offense. Uh, double tight end with a wishbone. And they're either going to come power off tackle right or power off tackle left. That time they came left. Zaponik able to get the first down at midfield. So it'll be first and 10 for Central from that point. Central has to be able to throw the ball, Don. They haven't successfully done that. And Belair's starting to really you know, jam the line of scrimmage and get more and more defenders up there. And they're normally effective with a lot of screen passes. To Carlo down the middle, Jake Emmerling. Oh, can't hang on to it. He almost made a fantastic catch. To Carlo put it in there as Emmerling got behind the secondary. I'll tell you, nice. Nice throw by DiCarlo, a little play action pass. Here it is from ground level. You're going to see Emmerling actually makes a good catch, but when he hits the ground, it's when the ball pops loose. Here it is uh, from, from up here. Another great angle. Good job by our uh, camera crew uh, following that ball all the way. I like that play call. A little Absolutely. First down. Absolutely. Love that play call. You know, they've been running the ball, running the ball, a little play action, and uh, able to sneak a uh, defend or a receiver. Direct snap, Matt there. Robinson. And a gain of about four. But that'll keep you honest. That, that direct snap, Wheeling Central makes a lot of hay with that. Snapping it to uh, Davon Gordon. They've been sending Bednar in motion, and there, there goes the right. direct snap. So that's an option off of that. And uh, they have you know a couple of plays that they can run off of that uh, spinner series. They have the power sweep. Uh, they have the quarterback keep. They have the uh, counter coming back with one of the wingbacks. Third down. Fake it to Bednar. No, Bednar does take the handoff, and Bednar goes top side. He's going to be close to the sticks. And and the key with this offense is the quarterback with the with the ball moving, the fakes, and carrying out the fakes. Right. And you know, the quarterback is the key in this offense. Uh, you know, Willie Central ran it so well with Palachetti last last year, and almost every team that we've seen on that has success with the spread offense has a very, very athletic quarterback. Clock at 6.20 to go here in the first half. And it's an associated home health first down. But when you look at Central, this is what they need here, a time-consuming drive. Right. Direct snap to Robinson again. Robinson to the 30-yard yard line with the forward progress to be close to another first down, bring up second short. If Casey Davis doesn't make this tackle, number 43, Matt Robinson, could go all the way. That's the third time in this series they've run that direct snap. Here it is from, uh, from up top. Nice blocking, nice turn in, nice turnout block, nice running seam in there. You can see Bednar downfield trying to get a block and uh, short of the first down. And that's what opens up plays like that sweep to Mickey Bednar. Right. You, you're middle linebacker, you've got to stay in there and be honest with the way they've been hitting you with this uh, direct snap. Here's the pony, kind of picks his way through, and he picks up a first down. Not a long run, just two or three yards, but he got the first down. Why, Coach? Because he was patient. Patient, that's right. And, uh, you know, good blocking along the left side of this line. Uh, both uh, both fullback and, uh, and the left halfback were lead blockers on that. 
able to open up a running lane, get it upfield inside the 30. Here it is, it's just a power, power sweep in there. Even DiCarlo is involved in the blocking. And uh, good tackle by uh, Belair's defense, but not until Central gets a first down at about the 27 yard line. Gun with the sidecar and the double wings. They stay in the set. Fakes it to Bednar and turns it up inside. Josh Lancione's having himself a day. Lancione coming up with another tackle, getting help from Kyle Hamilton as well. But Lancione, big number 66, uh, pretty doggone impressive this afternoon. Yeah, pretty doggone big, too. It's 6'1", 250 pounds. But for that size, he moves very, very well. Uh, you know, moves along the line of scrimmage very well and is able to pursue uh, very well for, uh, for a boy his size. Belair has some really big guys along that defensive front, uh, Don Young, looking at uh, not only Lancion, but uh, their other tackle. Oh, Eli Gillespie, yeah. he's 265 as well. That's right. Movement center. Ah. It's where you can't shoot yourself in a foot. You know, you have a nice drive going. You don't want to make any mistakes. And, and here's a mistake that uh, Central makes. So instead of being uh, second and 10, it ends up being second and 15. And if you're Belair, with them passing the ball, it doesn't kill you. And that hurts you if, you, if you're head central a lot more because you're living on the four or five, six yard plays, right? not not the uh, 10 to 12 yard pass plays. Absolutely. Second and 15. Take it to Bednar, trying to set up the screen. He's Matt Robinson, one. he's got Josh and Zach Coslow in front of him, and Robinson's got the first down. Perfectly executed play for the Crusaders and the screen pass. That's one of the big plays in uh, the, the playbook of Frank Spence and Greggy Bain. You know, last week, uh, Don, they tried to run the screen a couple times against Edison. It was never there. Edison really recognized it very well. Robinson does a nice job here. Good blocking downfield. The uh, linemen were able to get out, get, get a couple blocks. Number 70, uh, Josh Coslow was out there getting a key block for Central. Both Coslow boys, Zach and Josh out there for the blocks. Here goes Bednar, direct snap, Robinson. And he gets down to the 10 yard line. This is where it gets tough, and this is where Belair really gets, starts getting tough. Uh, number 55 for Belair, uh, Eli Gillespie in there, 6'1", 265, doing a good job. Pulling out to a short gain, it's gonna bring up second and about five, but a good surge on first down by the Crusaders. Hollywood City Center red zone, Robinson the sidecar, Bednar and Zaponik, your wings. DiCarlo is gonna be brought down, the pitch is the last second, and Zaponik, uh, the they're forward gonna call pass, it down. so it would be, no? They're gonna call, I think. Are they calling call it down or they calling it a forward pass? Because well, they were motioning incomplete. Okay, we're gonna take a look at it. I don't know if DiCarlo's knee was down. He's in the grasp right here. It should be down there. Yeah. And uh, they're calling it, yeah, they're calling it an incomplete pass. They're bringing him back to the original line of scrimmage, and we do have somebody down from Catholic Central. Dylan Garlow with the pressure, a great job there. And really, right. ironically, Central got a break because he, he should have been down uh, back absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. I, th I thought his knee was down before he got rid of the ball, Don, and uh, that's a break for Central. Injured player in the field is Matt Robinson. He's walking off. We'll take a break and be back with more after this. Third and five for the Crusaders. The ball at the 11-yard line. They're in that wishbone set. They're going to run behind Zach Coslow. Zapolnik. He gets the gain, but uh, a nice hit coming up in the secondary. Well, it was a great hit. Nice hold, though, over the uh, the left side, and uh, good reaction by the uh, Belair defense to hold that out of the end zone, but it is going to give him the first down. Zach Manning right here. Wow, nice hit. He had a key interception last week at St. Clairsville there with a big stick. There now, it is the ground level. Wow, what a nice pop. But they're hurt, though. Matt Robinson out. He was injured a couple of plays ago. Cody Linsky down at fullback, Mickey Bednar. And Bednar is going to be stopped, short gain. Bring up second down and goal. Matt Robinson over here on the near side. May have got the wind knocked out of him. Andrew Pro on the stop. Toby Longo kind of slow getting, getting up. He's the tight end on the right side. Joseph Bain brings the play in. 
So he'll be uh, checking in for Justin Mosty. Second and goal, ball on the four. Look for some play action, maybe waggle action, and then uh, trying to hit the tight end in the flat. Hand off, Saponic. And not much there. A lot no of gain traffic the play. over there. A lot of traffic, a lot of red shirts. Zach Manning coming up once again defensively. Manning and Andrew Crow leading the way. Andrew Crow, 5'11", 245, able to get over there. Here it is from uh, ground level. And you can see they got that really uh, defense very well. They forced the ball carrier back to the inside and uh, Pursuit was able to catch up with him. Third and goal now to four. Zach Koslow at the left tackle spot. Fumbled snap. And they recover it. Matt Robinson's got his helmet on, so I think he would be coming back in. Central's going to call a timeout. Here it is, and it's the uh, it's a fumble on the exchange between the quarterback and the center, and that, that's the thing that drives coaches just crazy. You know, when you make a mistake like that. So the Central calls the timeout. They're going to think about it. They're going to talk about it. It's fourth and goal. Fourth and goal to go at the five. And you just saw Zach Kostler, big number 54. He is one of our blocks of granite on our preseason blocks of granite. He ended up being one of the blocks of granite last year. Belmont National Bank wants to grant it, nominate who you think should be the top five offensive linemen in the Ohio Valley. Go to sports at WTOV.com to do so. And uh, we've got some dandies, DJ Duke. Uh, the River was on that preseason list. You see Zach Koslow there as well. Uh, Dan uh, Gordon out of Wheeling Central. Molesky out of Bridgeport. Grant Powell out of Barnesville. They were our five preseason blocks of granite. There you see Zach Kostler, big number 54. He's doing a great job central moving him around on that offensive line. Also playing middle linebacker as well. So fourth and goal to go on the five. Bednar in, Matt Robinson back in. So kind of an offset eye. Both Koslos on the left side of the line. Josh is going to pull, but they come back the other way. The Carlo touchdown central. But I tell you, that was a great effort because he could have been brought down at about the three-yard line, and he just kept on moving. He wasn't going to be denied. A little waggle action, a little blue leg action, and the Carlo is able to take it in. Here it is from up top, and you can see right here. He's grabbed at about the five, but he fights his way into the end zone. Here it is at ground level. Didn't have his shirt, actually had his right arm, but couldn't bring him down. Good effort by DiCarlo. Great effort by Johnny DiCarlo to run for that touchdown because he could have been brought down. An interesting place set there. They had Josh Koslow pull when Bednar went that way, and, and I'm sure your defense is heading that way, Absolutely. following the, the pulling guard. Sure. And and, uh, the, and Bednar, the tailback, and they come back the other way. Zach Koslow blocked down and took out, took out two guys. There was a flag, and I think this is going to be a delay of game, and that's what it is. It takes Bednar a little bit of time to change his, into his kicking shoe, and they just took a little bit too much time that time, so it's going to cost them five. So uh, Bednar will attempt now from the 15 instead of from the 10. Score 20 to 12, so a big extra point here. Remember, Central won the toss and deferred, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. And the extra point is up, and it is good. Your score 20 to 13, but a lot of time left in that first half clock to this Bel Air offense. Bel Air leads 20 to 13 on the Vapor Jet scoreboard. What's a lot of time? Well, 53 seconds is what's left here in the first half, so I'm sure the fireworks aren't over for the first half. Well, I tell you, that was, a, that was a, not only a nice drive by Central, but a very important drive. They had to do something with the football, you know, to get it down. Uh, even if they didn't score, if they were just able to move it and change the field position somewhat, you know, that would have been important for them. But they took the ball down, they scored, did a good job, and mostly by running the ball. Well, at the point that they got the football, that's what they needed to do. Take off most of the time remaining, get a touchdown. Now, if you can hold them here, they get the ball to start the second half, right. but you can could, you could go and tie this thing up. Absolutely. That was an important drive for them. WVU dropped another tough one. 
losing Thursday night to the Colorado Buffaloes in overtime. Uh, field goal off the upright in that one. But Mountaineer Magazine, you can see it each and every Saturday at 11.30 a.m. and the MSN replay Tuesday at 2.05 a.m. To return for the Big Reds. Out to about the 33-yard line. I know some uh, some Belair fans uh, under us are calling for a face mask, but I think Central uh, Central defender grabbed him by the uh, the shoulder pad and, and pulled him down. But a good job uh, by Belair's number eight, Casey Tuttle, uh, handling that uh, ball on the kickoff and uh, giving Belair pretty good field position at about their own 33-yard line. And they've got time. They got more than 45 seconds. Hawker part of the trips to the top side to Beesick down to the bottom. Feller looking for the middle man, Crozier, and Crozier gets brought from down from behind at the 46-yard line by Johnny DiCarlo, but another first down. And, and literally, even on first down, Bellers running these routes, they're, they're picking up 10 yards a pop and on his pass plays yeah, and, and moving the sticks. And the most important thing, too, Don, is that he got out of bounds at about the 41-yard line, and uh, Belair still has two timeouts left. So uh, in 40 seconds, they can get three or four plays, uh, maybe even more than that. Just an out route uh, by the inside receiver, number 10, Levi Crozier, for the uh, for the completion. Crozier down to the bottom now with Tabisic. Koslow with the pressure. They unload it. Rose is open. Incomplete. Just beyond the outstretched hands of Tyler Rose. Keith Zipolnik in, uh, on the coverage that time, but... Uh, uh, Ted, the, the receiver got an inside position on him uh, right down the middle of the field. A well-thrown ball by Feller, just slightly overthrown, as you can see right there. But, uh, you know, an, an excellent route by Tyler Rose, number three, one of the wide receivers from uh, Bel Air. Timeout Central. Brings up second down. And, 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 and the thing with Bel Air, you always say that, they bring in, it seems like, wave after wave of receivers. And, and Rose comes in. You've got Tabisic. You've got Crozier and Hawker. But what this does, you're running all these deep routes and so yep. forth. Guys get a breather. Hawker was not in on that play. Now he'll be in on this play. And you, you've got a pair of fresh right. legs and fresh lungs. Absolutely. And the one thing that Central has been doing defensively, Don, most of the pressure that they've been bringing against Fowler has been coming from the inside from Zach Koslow. They haven't really sent anybody off of the edge yet. And and that's what I'd like to see if uh, if they've got a defensive look that they could get to uh, to Belair to where they could come off the edge and put some heat on Feller. Next Saturday, WVU plays home state rivals, the Marshall Thundering Herd. See if the Mountaineers can rebound for that overtime loss to Colorado. Game starts at 3.30. We're three. You can let me know here on WTOV9. That is... Uh, Next Saturday afternoon, WVU and Marshall. Up that from the truck, what's the rule? Do I go by my sheet or the screen? <laughs> Regardless, tune in at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, WVU and Marshall. Feller steps inside, fires it to Besick. Touchdown, Bel Air. Okay, that time they did come with a blitz off the corner. They made uh, Feller step up into the pocket. They're getting some heat from the inside then, uh, as you can see right here. But a perfectly thrown ball. Nothing fancy, just one-on-one -on -one coverage. And number five for Belair, Ty Tabisic makes the catch. And the extra point is blocked. 23 seconds to go in the first half. Big Reds lead it 26-13 on the Vapor Jet scoreboard. Next week, the WTOV9 Game of the Week, Friday night, Barnesville and Shadyside. Shadyside Tigers at Barnesville, part of the big pumpkin festival weekend in Barnesville, or as I like to say, Barntown. Barntown and Shadyburg, those are my two nicknames. Uh, that's, uh, that's a nice festival if anybody has, has ever not been there. 
High School Football Chat each and every Tuesday at 8. Email your questions to sports at WTOB.com. If you have a high school football question, you can email it now to that matter, and we will read it on the show on uh, Tuesday night or listen to the show. And a topic of interest comes up during the show that you want to ask us a question about, email it to sports at WTOB.com. I'm joined by a coach each and every week and by the Ohio Valley sports doctor, John Simonson, who just does an incredible job of uh, keeping track of the playoff points in both Ohio and West Virginia. When either one of those states has a question or wants to double check, he's their cross checker. He's, uh, he, we don't call him the doctor for nothing. He's been doing it for years. A lot of people coming on trying to do that, pick that up, but uh, John's the original. He's been doing that for a long time. There's the kickoff. Johnny DeCarlo, nice return by DeCarlo across midfield. Johnny DeCarlo takes it to the house. Touchdown Central, Woo! how about that? Wow, and his parents are hugging in front of us. <laughs> oh my nice goodness. Job by DeCarlo. One of the problems with that is the kick was a line drive kick. It didn't give their uh, coverage team a whole lot of time to get down there, but you know, he finds the seam, he never breaks his stride. Once he finds the seam, he stretches it out, and there's nobody that's going to catch him. He just strides it out all the way for the score. Good job by Catholic Central, and that is such a big, big score. You know, Don, when Belair took the ball, there were 53 seconds there was 53 left. 53 seconds left. There's still 10.7 seconds left in this half. We're right above the Central fans. And I'm telling you, I never saw someone get so excited as his mother. She hugged her husband and high-fived about eight, eight people <laughs> before he's gonna be just getting into the end zone. Vapor Jeff scoreboard, this is fun. We've got a shootout. Bel Air 26, Central 19 on your Vapor Jeff scoreboard. And we are back 26-19. Your score on the Vapor Jeff scoreboard. Mickey Bednar on to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. A six-point game at 26-20. 46 points in this first half. And I'll tell you, it may not be over yet. There's still 10.7 seconds left in this half. And you don't know if Belair's going to throw another bomb or not. And, and realistically, I expected normal play, kickoff, little short return. Maybe Central Neal on it to get the ball to start the second half and, and the first half, but uh, oh, the fireworks. A lot the of guys of Sunday of Night players. Football travel to Green Bay this Sunday for the Dallas at Green Bay game. The game starts 8-15 Sunday night. Here's a preview. Sunday night is football night. The Dallas Cowboys at the Green Bay Packers. Can Aaron Rodgers replace the legend? Tony Romo, this guy may be the best. In for the touchdown! Sunday night only on NBC. Set for the Wintersville Trophy Shop kickoff. And you run one back, you better make sure the other guys don't run one back. Really? Good coverage here, necessary. There's Bednar's kick. A squibber. Canner at the 15. And Canner Bumble. ball on the ground at the 27 yard line. I think Central's got it. They sure do. 3.6 seconds left. Central's got some momentum. They got one chance to make something happen. Great special teams job by Cody Miner who punched that thing out. See if uh, Central goes to the end zone. Well, they're gonna That's have time to. for one play. See if they go deep with it. Sean Harlan has been their big play receiver this year. Mickey Bednar as far as number of catches as well. So you wanna see where Bednar and Harlan are. Remember, everyone got a step on the guys uh, a little earlier. Well, we got some pull set back. out here. That's Keith Zapolnik near side. Johnny DeCarlo, straight drop. He's got time. He's looking. Zapolnik with the catch. He's going to be short. you got to get it in the end zone. Yep. And uh, that will end the first half. 
I guess this is what they call a Saturday afternoon shootout. We take another look at it. And you had time for one play. You really want the receiver to get his route into the end zone and uh, making the catch the five yard line. I guess we talk about a prevent defense. That was the prevent. Ty right. Kapisic, uh attack him short of the end zone. And the big thing uh, there is you keep all of the receivers in front of you. Don't let them get behind you. And uh, Belair did a good job. It's a long completion, but gain, uh, the half ends at the five yard line. Homecoming Queen candidates down on the field as we are here at halftime of the homecoming game at Bel Air. Vapor Jet scoreboard, Bel Air leads Central 26-20. Boy, it's been a good one, having some fun. Let's check in with Haley Call. I'm here on the sidelines. It is, we're going into the half with Bel Air's head coach right here, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about, you know, the plans for the second half. Well, we played pretty good half. We, we got up a couple times, way up, and we let them back in. So we want to try to keep them out, out the second half. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're going to say to the guys in the locker room? I'm just going to tell them we're keeping them too many chances. We're up two touchdowns. We'll give them another one. We'll go up two touchdowns. We'll give them another one again. So we got to hang in there. Thank you so much. Don and Rich, back to you guys. And thanks a lot, Haley. Greg Boner, head coach of the Bel Air Big Reds. And here's your halftime score, 26-20, Bel Air leading Central. We'll be back with the second half of the game of the week after this. Second half of play, 26-20. It is Bel Air leading Steubenville Catholic Central on the Vapor Jet scoreboard. An exciting thrill a minute first half. Let's take a look at it. First possession of the game for Bel Air. Mickey Bednar, five yard touchdown, 6 0 Crusaders. Bel Air answers. Ryan Feller to Ty Capisa. Game tied at six. Feller to Dylan Garlow, 13 6. Johnny DiCarlo, a touchdown run, 20 13. Bel Air. Feller to Capisa, 26 13. That was an under a minute to go in the half of the ensuing kickoff. Johnny DiCarlo takes it to the touchdown. And that is where we stand. 26-20, your score at halftime. We're set for the second half kickoff. The Crusaders get the ball to start the half. And they kick it to Johnny DiCarlo. And DiCarlo out to the 32-yard line. He may have a face mask. It's hard to tell on the far side, but it, it looks like he went down pretty hard at the end of that play. Uh, we're going to uh, wait until the official makes the call. I'll tell you, there haven't been many penalties in this game. I think they uh, signaled a personal foul. Might have been a late hit out of bounds, Don. They did not signal a face mask that I can see. And ironically, I think on the kickoff that the Carla returned at the end of the half, they were that's they were saying kick it to 12. They, they didn't want to kick it off to Mickey Bednar, who's really made it march as a return right. man. And uh, you know, it ended up being picked or poisoned because uh, the Carlo had a phenomenal return. For that kick. Now, Central starts the second half here in the eye. Matt Robinson shaking up at the end of the half. He's in there. And Robinson takes the handoff. And short pickup, maybe a yard. Interesting. Central starts the second half here in the eye because they started to make their hay when they went to that spinner series with the double wing and the, uh, the direct snaps. But, uh, you know, they also scored on their first possession by running out of the eye. So Right, on the short field. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, they're, I, I think that they're more comfortable running out of the eye, Don, and I think that's why they start, the, you know, the half, uh, you know, in that formation. Full back offset, uh, fumbled snap. And that's twice now that they've had a problem with the exchange from quarterback to center. Well, I'll tell you, that, you know, that really hurts. That's, you know, that's a down that you lose. Not only do you have a possibility of losing the ball, but if you don't lose the ball, you lose it down uh, because you have no, no chance to, to, uh, to make a play. So it's going to be third and about 11. There you saw the end media replay. Split backs now. Robinson and Bednar. DiCarlo looking for Emerling. Overthrown. Brings up fourth down. I tell you, Emerling had a nice little route there. He came down about uh, seven, eight yards, made a move uh, toward the post, and then uh, planted that inside foot, ran an out pattern, but the ball was overthrown, although he was open. That's a real, real hard pass to complete because he's got a long way to throw it. Here it is uh, right here. 
you can see that uh, Emmerling had a step or two on the defender, but uh, just wasn't able to get him the ball. So a three and out, not the way Sucker wanted to start this half. Here is Toby Longo. And field it back of the 27-yard line by Kyle Johnson. We'll take a break and be back with more Bel Air's first possession of the second half still to come. And today you haven't wanted to miss any of Bel Air's possessions. Their offense is pretty explosive. Bel Air coming out in a trip set on their first play of the second half. To basic little swing to Canner. Oh, I tell you, I'm not block so, right I'm there. Not so sure there wasn't some holding on that by one of the wide receivers yeah. from Belair on a central defender. Holding or blocking the back. I mean, a little swing pass to Tabisic. And they get the first nice. down. There's nice a play, though. Block right there. Yeah, block right in the there. back. But a very well designed play. Uh, good positive yardage. Gets it out to the 40. They had the trip set out there and uh, send it back behind him to where he had three blockers. High set. Barnes, not much going there. When Belair goes to their running game, you know, they, they haven't been real, real successful. Uh, but, you know, their passing game has been super so far, uh, you know, this afternoon. That was just a real short gain of less than one. We'll call it second and nine. Hawker split alone, top side to Beesick and Crozier down on the bottom. Feller in that gun with a pair of sidecars. Feller looking to Beesick. First down and more, tied to Beesick. Can he outrun Mickey Bednar? Yes, he can. Touchdown, Bel Air. That is a 59 yard touchdown. Just a short pass, but these receivers from Bel Air can make that first defender miss, and that's what he does. That's that hitch pattern they, they've thrown so often, uh, you know, in this ball game. This this has to be at least the, the sixth or seventh time they've thrown this, and uh, you can see number five, Ty DeVisa, does a good job. There's a missed tackle right there. There's another missed tackle right there. Another missed tackle. There's three missed tackles, and you can see Bednar gives it a good effort, but just can't do it. Made the first guy miss, and then he literally split two defenders. I mean, that's a lot of yak. That's a lot of yards after catch yep. from Ty to Besick, and that is his third, third touchdown, touchdown of the day. To Besick, uh, a, a veteran veteran receiver. Bel Air went 0 and 10 last year, but uh, these kids are seniors playing on a pretty doggone good team when they were sophomores. Extra point is up and it's good. 33-20. On the Vapor Jet scoreboard, Bel Air, just like he did in the first half, they strike quick. Well, Central needs to answer here, and uh, they're going to get the kickoff. Last time they, they got the ball in, in pretty decent field position after a uh, personal foul penalty. And uh, we'll see if they can uh, do a better job of returning now and uh, maybe duplicating what uh, Johnny DiCarlo did right before the half, taking it to the house. But you know, time will tell. So uh, I'm sure Belair is going to be real, real careful. And uh, their special teams coach is telling them to make sure that the coverage is solid. Game of the week next Friday night, Shadyside and Barnesville. Shadyside and Barnesville, part of the Barnesville Pumpkin Festival weekend. And a reminder that Tuesday night at 8, we have the high school football chat on WTOV9.com. So WTOV9.com and WTOV9, your home for high school football. Winners will trophy shop kickoff. Mickey Bednar and Johnny DiCarlo standing back on their own 15-yard line. what Bel Air decides to do. They're going to kick it to DiCarlo. Finding that wall. And nice tackle. Fumble on the play, and Bel Air's got it. Uh, they're calling nope. him down. Referee is calling him down. Joe Honeywell coming up with the stick on the special teams play for the Bel Air Big Reds. An important possession here coming up for the Crusaders of Catholic Central. 
And they'll have it first and 10 on their own 29-yard line. Here's another look. It is on EM Media. That's number 50, 56. Honeywell. Joe Honeywell making a good solid hit. Ball pops out, but the referee trailing the play called the receiver down at that point. Hand off, Bednar. Fights for some yardage. Carson on the tackle for Bel Air. Uh, the last, I guess, shootout that Central was in was at East Palestine. They lost that one 42 22. And uh, the 22 points, the biggest point output for the Crusaders this season. Central's not a team that, that's into 30 some odd point shootouts, but they're going to have to be today if they're going to win this thing. 33 20 split backs, Bednar and Robinson. Johnny DiCarlo sets up the screen to Bednar, and it was set up. The blocking was out there, but Devin Bednar Parson. was covered by Devin Parson, and it never really got open. You know, the one the one play that they had a lot of success with on their first drive, Don, when they waited for the touchdown to take the lead 6-0. You know, they were running the stretch play with Bednar, and, uh, you know, we haven't seen it since then, so uh, we'll see if uh, maybe they'll come back with it uh, in this series, although they're, they're looking at third and about seven. Your style, if you're central, isn't Bel Air style. You can't no. panic. You, hey, as a team, if you're down, you're down two touchdowns. You've just got to do what you do best and uh, just keep chipping away. Reverse, coming back this way. That's Sean Harlan, and tied to Bisick, having himself a game. To Bisick with a tackle at the 32-yard line. Now, Jeff, they could have got a blocker out here for Harlan coming on the reverse. They might have had, you know, some real, real good positive yardage. Here it is right here. This is Harlan coming from his wide receiver position after the fake of the blast play. And uh, they could have got a blocker out there. Here it is from another angle on the M Media replay. Just can't get by to be a nice open field tackle. So two three and outs to start the second half for the Crusaders. Toby Longo standing on his own 19. Good pressure from Zach Manning. Casey Davis. Snowed under. Sean Harlan and Mark Elson there for the tackle. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more of the Game of the Week 33-20. Bel Air leading Central. Big Reds come out with... Uh, Crozier tight to the top side. Hawker up that way as well. They will run it. Barnes on the carry. Coming up and making the stop for the Crusaders, Justin Mosty. Just trying to keep Central honest in there. They'll, you know, they'll try to pop one. Uh, running play every once in a while, but second and long now. I'm sure that you're going to see the ball up in the air. Everybody's looking at their wristbands. Tyler Rose in for Hawker. Rose split top side, tied to Bisick down to the bottom. I set. Crozier tight ends up to the top side. Feller rolling that way. Dumps it out to Bobka out of the backfield. Incomplete will bring up third down. Joey Zapolnik, good pressure for Central. A little bit of play action that time. Here it is right here, then trying to hit a back in the flat coming out of the backfield. But uh, the ball just not thrown uh, accurately. And goes in completely, bring up third and nine. And it's very, very important that Central hold here on third down and force Belair to punt. I think if you're Belair, I think you're looking to set up a play to Hawker. They haven't thrown to him since uh, very early in the first half. They've been going more to the middleman in that trip set, which is Crozier. And those two part of the twins set now to the top. Zach Coslo, some pressure. Feller steps out of it, unloads. Incomplete, and uh, really almost getting a hand on it was the linebacker, Joey Zapolnik. Incomplete, and they'll bring up fourth down. Good defensive series for the Crusaders. Belair just seemed out of sync a little yeah. bit. It, it seems like the most success that Belair has is throwing the ball vertically. You know, those little hitches, the deep, uh, uh, you know, uh, takeoff patterns and, and the post patterns and so on. So it, it, it seems like uh, any kind of play action or so on, you know, they, they're, they're having a problem with right now. Rose with the punt. Field it, 
by Jordan Caramana. Nice move to get by the first line. And he gets out to the 43-yard line. Special teams play, Brandon Bell and Jake Foster for the Reds, also over there, Kyle Hamilton. There it is, it was an end over and sort of a line drive, but a nice move here by Jordan Terramana to get past that first wave of defenders, but the second wave stayed in their lanes, made a good solid tackle. Uh, Central will have it first and 10 at their own 43 yard line. Central will stay in the eye. Zach Coslo and Josh Coslo both at the bottom of your screen. Ball on the ground. The opponent picks it back up. And uh, not much there off that top side. Devin Parson, nice job defensively for Bel Air, along with Joe Honeywell. You have to work a lot on this uh, this option to make it work. It's uh, you know so very, very important to keep a proper pitch relationship between the quarterback and the trailing back. And that's up to the trailing back to make sure that he's about four yards away from the quarterback and about one yard in front of him uh, so that the pitch can be made uh, forward instead of backward. To Play Carlo, out. this way, Pat ah. Robinson out of the backfield, incomplete. Tad Robinson had a step on number 20, uh, Dylan Garlock, and uh, ball was just uh, overthrown slightly. What uh, DeCarlo has to do is make sure that when he's coming on that rollout that he get his shoulders squared away so that he's facing the defender and doesn't have to throw across his body. Mickey Bednar's out of the game. They, uh, they're looking at him down on the near sideline. So Bednar, Bednar out at the moment, and it's a polling is in replacing him and Zapolnik and Robinson sidecars as they operate out of the gun. Looking deep, pass intended for Emerling, incomplete. Hawker on the coverage, flag on the play. There's a flag at about the 48 yard line, so we'll see what the call is going to be. An eligible receiver downfield against Central. I know to decline that. Be bring up a punting situation for Central. Punt team comes on, Bednar back in there. And we'll check in here shortly with Haley Call down on the sideline. Change of possession coming up. Here's Toby Longo. Nice high punt. It's short. Fair catch called for. They muff it. And we'll see uh, initially another Bel Air player got on top of it. And I think Bel Air did recover. Personal foul right there against Bel Air. Yep. Bel a Bel Air player grabbed a central player and just by the back of the jersey, jersey pulled him off, the, off the, pile. the pile. Bel Air retains Larry. possession. Wow, that's two punts that they fumbled, and Central just hasn't been able to get it. And let's head to the sidelines and check in with Haley Call. Thanks, John. This past Thursday, Catholic Central's golf team won the OVAC AA title. I'm now joined with Ryan Smith. He's a senior at Central and on the golf team. Ryan, how did it feel to bring home the title your senior year? Yeah, it felt really good to bring another championship back to. Catholic Central. We worked really hard, so it paid off. Now this year was Coach Rocky Augustine's first year as head coach. How did the transition go, and how did you feel the season went overall? It was pretty tough for us older guys, but Rocky really prepared us well, both in practices and in matches, so it was good. Well, congratulations, and thank you. Thank you. Don, back to you. And definitely congratulations. I was there at the tournament at Crispin, and uh, Central doing a great job in that. Feller to BC, and it is incomplete. And good coverage for the Crusaders. Keith Zaponik, but uh, talking about that OVAC golf title, congratulations to the Crusaders. And they weren't one of the favorites. Lindsay and Ford Fry were the two favorites, and they snuck in there and came out with the OVAC title. Good coverage. Very good coverage that time by Zaponik on uh, Tabizic. And uh, Tabizic's had a real big game so far. Three touchdown catches. Canner. Little draw play that time, uh, and again, not 
not going very, very well. You know, it's really ironic, uh, you know, Don, that Belair's offensive line is so good at pass blocking. And, uh, you know, but their running game just hasn't been able to go. They haven't been able, you know, to move anybody off of that defensive line from Central to open up any running lanes. And, uh, you know, just an indication of, you know, how much time they work on certain things in practice, and evidently they work on pass blocking an awful lot. Well, Dylan Garla, the middle man to the bottom, is uncovered, and he flip it out somehow to Eric Canner. Canner, a lot of running room out to the 43-yard line, and, and if you're dragging Bay down on the sideline, it's what can you do? They got three guys hanging on Feller. Yeah. Somehow Feller gets, the, gets okay. rid of him. Just watch this play. Great a little play. basketball pass right here you're going to see. He's going down and sees a uh, red jersey and dumps it off to number 14 for Belair. It's Eric Canner, and Canner takes it up near midfield. And uh, first down. And heads up from Eric Canner, too, as well. Please. Yes. And uh, there's a central player down. That's over on the far sideline. And uh, the Big Reds coming off win over St. Clairsville. They open the season with a loss at Thornville Sheridan. Open with a win at home with John Marshall. Lost a tough one by three points to Buckeye Local here. Then picked up the win against St. Clairsville. So Bel Air entering today 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Next week, a, a Friday night, a pretty tough test on the road at Harrison Central. Catholic Central open a season with losses at home to Columbiana and then at Wheeling Island against Wheeling Central on the road to East Palestine and then won last week against Edison. Mickey Bednar was the injured player in the far sideline and he's coming over. They were trying to get him stretched out. It seems to be an, a leg issue with Bednar. There's a look at the Crusaders schedule and uh, that win over Edison, a, a great game last week in the game, the week of 20 to 17 upcoming. Uh, at Toronto, home versus Akron East, and Columbus St. Charles at St. Clairsville at Levittsburg Lebray, and uh, Lebray and St. Charles should be a couple of tough tests there. St. Clairsville as well. Upcoming schedule for Catholic Central Lander today with a one and three record. So first and ten after pulling the rabbit out of the hat on third down. Canner, he's got some running room if he can turn the corner, cuts it up and gets to the 49 before being brought down by Keith Sapolni. Here it is here, and uh, you can see that he gets the corner, has you know pretty nice speed, is able to outrun a defender right there, but uh, you know good inside-out pursuit from uh, Catholic Central holds that to a gain of six, so it'll be second and four. Trips topside. Dylan Garlow in the middle of that trip set. They're going to hand it to Devin Parson. And Parson gets the first down. Once again, Josh Lancey with another nice block to open things up for the Big Red. See if Big Red tries to uh, you know, establish a running game with uh, about four, four minutes and 15 seconds left to go in this quarter. Here's a look at it here. You can see that Robinson has a pretty good beat on him, but uh, I'll tell you, number 17 from Belair is a big kid, Devin Parson, six foot, 195, is able to sort of drag him for the first down. Feller on the gun, pressure, dumps it, incomplete, and the receiver slipped. They're trying to get that to Eric Canner on the coverage, Joseph Polnick. Joseph Polnick there on the coverage. Second and 10. They will send Anthony Hawker far to the top. Dylan Garlow in the middle. Eric Canner, the inside man in the trip set. To Beesick down on the bottom. They are up tight on him with the corner. Feller, he's going to run with it. And Justin Mosty with a tackle at the 40 yard line. That was number 42. That's Justin Mosty on the tackle. Makes a nice open field tackle. Looked like Feller was going to be able to run for some. Little fake inside, good coverage by the uh, central secondary, makes Feller run the ball, gets it upfield for a positive gain of about four yards, bring up third and about six. The end, Toby Longo shaking up, he checks out over here to the near sideline. Feller, 
Underneath route to Eric Canner. And a short pick up there will bring up fourth and about three or four. DiCarlo on the tackle, a nice open field tackle. He was right behind the defender. He's going to bring up fourth and about two. A little play action of Frizo's inside linebackers. Sapolnik was, or uh, Koslow was coming on a uh, on a stunt up the middle and uh, was putting some pressure on Feller, forced him to get rid of the ball maybe sooner than he wanted to. It's been evolving into more of almost a, a clock eating uh, time of possession type offense for Bel Air. They haven't been going vertical as much. Koslow with the pressure. It's set up for Hawker on fourth down incomplete. Now there, I'm surprised they went deeper because they only needed three yards right. to get the first out. And, uh, you know, because of Costello putting some heat on and forced him out of the pocket once he's on the move, you know, he's trying to get the ball deep. He's not as accurate as when he's able to stand in the pocket. And there, there you can see he badly overthrows his receiver. Give a good look at Feller and Coach Boner over on the far sideline. Hey, it was interesting, in the interview we had with him, uh, he talked about the being underrated this year. He said, quite frankly, you know, a lot of people didn't expect as much coming this season, but to be honest, I didn't play very well. I did not have a good year last year. And tough for a high school kid to admit yeah. that. And boy, is he having a year this year. Here comes the Carlo. Nice run, going to gain about five yards. But a playing quarterback at Bel Air. That's got to be a, a, a situation with a great history and a great line of quarterbacks. It's almost like I think sometimes you expect Beller's going to have a, one of the best quarterbacks in the Valley, no matter who it is. And, right. and sometimes, you know, he was a sophomore last year. It takes some time to get your feet wet. Well, tell you, he certainly has, uh, you know, improved a great deal. Uh, you know, he has a lot of poise when he sits in the pocket. Very accurate throwing the deep ball. Second to seven, we see Central back down that formation that they had a lot of success with in the first half. The Carlo takes the handoff, he's gonna keep it. He's got the first down to Carlo across midfield to the 47 yard line. And we talked about this in the break. End of the first half, Central very successful with this offensive set. They come out in the second half with something else with the eye, and now they're back to it, picking up a, a first down. Yeah, good job by the offensive line there. And uh, DiCarlo is able to find a, a crease there in uh, in that defensive front of, uh, of Belair's. Gets it upfield for a good gain. It's going to be first down just inside Belair's territory at about the 47-yard line. Matt Robinson out, Cody Linsky in. And Robinson's been the guy in the direct snaps. But now it's Cody Linsky, his first time on the direct snap. And he's going to gain a couple. Cody Linsky out there seen some new guys in there for uh, for Catholic Central. Uh, well, Robinson's been, been off the field a couple of times. He's been shaken yeah, well, up. Bednar has. Well, you know, he, he needs to needs to be out every once in a while because he plays both offense and defense. And uh, and as a result of that, on a hot afternoon like this, you got to be able to spell them periodically so that they can get dehydrated or so they can get hydrated. Linsky, that sidecar. Bednar not in there either. He's been he's been injured. To Carlo. He takes a hard hit, Dylan Garlow. Gonna bring up third down. This is a down coach Bain doesn't want to be in. He doesn't like to be in third and long. Their, their passing game has not been real, real strong this afternoon. Uh, third and 11. You know, they almost have to put the ball up. And once they get away from their running game, uh, you know, they, they, they seem to struggle a little bit with their passing game. Bednar still out, being intended to on the sideline. Paramana split near side. Brandon Talbot is one of your slot backs. To Carlo, straight drop, firing downfield. Emerling, incomplete in the hands, but he couldn't pull it down. Okay, nice throw by DiCarlo that time, right down the middle of the field. Two defenders there, but the ball got by both of them, and uh, but just wasn't able to handle it for the completion going to bring up fourth down and Central will have to punt. <laughs> now Toby Longo I saw leave the game with an injury and he's their punter so they've got a different punter now it is Keith Zapolnik. That cost is injured too on the near side looks like trying to get his win. 
See, now that changes things up. Player coming on late. Keith Zapolnik is back to punt. Good pressure by one of the interior men uh, for Bel Air. I'm sure he didn't get a hand on that. That either. was Andrew Crow. Good bounce, though. Ball's going down inside the 10. We'll take a break. WTOB 9's Game of the Week, Vapor Jet Scoreboard. Bel Air leads at 33 20 at the end of three quarters of play. Start the fourth quarter play, third quarter highlights tied to Bisick. Excellent run after the catch for the touchdown. That would be the only points put on the board in the third quarter. And that's where we stand at 33 20 starting the final quarter of play. So the Big Reds take over. They were see Coach Greg Boner over at the far sideline. Mickey Bednar back into the game defensively at the uh, outside linebacker spot at the far side. Oslo was shaken up a bit. He is back in there as well at middle linebacker. Teller up under center. Barnes trying to stretch it to that outside. Got it. And he turns the corner. Nice run by Barnes, and he is all tangled up in all kinds of coaches' headset wires at the 35, but he's got the first down. Nice run by Tyler Barnes. Yeah, he got him out of a, a big hole. They were down inside their 10-yard line. And uh, he's a track guy, Barnes. He's, yeah. Number a lot in the spring. Tyler Barnes does a good job of uh, getting to the outside. They uh, got everybody sealed inside over there. And uh, you can see Zapolnik chasing. And finally, number 12, Johnny DiCarlo, is the one that has to make the tackle uh, for the stop. Feller up under center. He'll be in the eye now with Bobka, the fullback. Booth coming this way. Feller. Nice pass to Anthony Hawker. And I'll tell you what, Feller has made some pinpoint passes today. Yes, he has. That was a nice catch by uh, Anthony Hawker running a deep out pattern. And uh, Feller is able to come and thread the needle, make the completion out near midfield at their own 49-yard line, first and 10. And the pass has really been the big, big weapon for, uh, for Belair this afternoon. And Feller, just a junior, as is Crozier, who's made a lot of big plays today as well. And off Barnes. He turns the corner, picks up the block from Crozier. First down and more down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, they have big offensive line of Belair starting to, starting to wear down the central defense. This is just a sweep to the right, and again, there's no outside containment. And number 22 is able to get, Tyler Barnes is able to get to the corner, turn the corner, get it upfield down to the 30-yard line of Central. That's about a 21-yard gain. Two receivers down to the bottom. Feller, Hawker. Intercepted by Murray, now there's a flag. I think they're going to call offensive pass interference against Murray. Or offensive would it be against Hawker. No, they're calling pass interference. Is it going against Central for the pass interference? Well, they haven't given a signal yet, but I'm, I'm anticipating that that's what it's going to be. Pass interference against Central. The same, it's the same pattern that uh, Anthony Hawker scored on earlier in the game. Just a straight streak pattern. But I tell you, Murray had a nice inside position, looked back for the ball, uh, made the interception. But he pushed off. He he got up to him and pushed off with that left forearm and then came back to get the ball. Well, the that's, ball. that's the way the official saw it uh, and, and made the call. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. Uh, it'll be first and 10 from the 15. There's Feller in that gun. Hand off Bobka. Nice spin, but he, he spins right into Josh Coslo. Along the 
Bring up second down. Little uh, cross action in the backfield for uh, for Belair that time. They were in the shotgun with two side cars. Fake one way, get back the other way. Not much running room. As a matter of fact, call it no gain. It'll be second and 10 from the 15 yard line. There it is, coming back the other way. Justin Mosty leading the way. Barnes on the carry. Also uh, number 23 for Catholic Central in there as well. It's Joseph Polnick. Mosty the first on the hit. Third and 11. Central starting to uh, to tighten up here a little bit. We'll see if uh, Feller tries to go to the air with one of those tall, wide receivers. Hawker down to the bottom to Bisic top side along with Crozier. Feller going to have a hold on Belair. He lets it go. Hawker makes the catch in the end zone, but I think it's coming back. Yep. There's a uh, flag in there that's holding against Belair. The official already gave the, uh, the signal. So that'll cost him 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And we won't know who it was. 9.39 to go in the ball game. Belair with a 33-20 lead. So this is going to be third and a lot. Hawker to the bottom, Crozier top side. That's 28. Feller steps up from the middle. Rose oh. touchdown, Belair. Just a post pattern by the wide receiver. Got behind the, uh, the free safety who was playing in the middle of the field. And again, a lot of time, straight drop back, throwing the ball vertically, gets behind the safety and in for the score. Tyler Rose, the touchdown grab from Feller. Bel Air passing game looking pretty doggone impressive, I'll tell you that. That's number 11 uh, on the coverage, and I don't have a number 11 on my program, Don. So uh, if you've got one, uh, we need to know. We need to see who that is. I do not. Let's see, Tyler Rose with a touchdown grab. And the extra point is up, and it's good. Bel Air Big Reds opening things up. They lead 40 to 20. 9.22 to go in the ball game. <laughs> 40 to 20 your score on the Vapor Jet scoreboard. Let's check back in with Haley Call. Thanks, Don. I am joined here with the Bel Air High School's 2008 homecoming queen, Kylie Nay. Kylie, what went through your mind when you heard your name being called and they announced you won? I was very astonished, very excited surprised and just I'm very happy and I'm just want to say, say thank you to everybody in my class for voting for me and I'm just excited for the dance tonight. Good. Have you picked out a special spot in your house where you're going to maybe put that crown? Definitely on my top shelf in my room. <laughs> Good. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Back to you, Don. And thanks a lot, Haley. And counting it up, it's one, two, three, four. Touchdown passes from Feller. I believe that the first touchdown, though, was on the run by Tyler Barnes. So it's the four touchdown passes. Murray on the return. And he's brought down to the 25 yard line. Dylan Garlow on the coverage for the Big Reds. So the Big Reds take, or Crusaders take over first and 10 on their own 26. Change at quarterback. I think I see DiCarlo at a wide receiver now and uh, Terramana at the quarterback position. 
And those two hooked up in the Wheeling Central game for a long pass play. DeCarlo, pretty impressive receiver. Handoff. Zapolnik, top side. And he's got a nice run. Nice gain on that carry. Bring up second and short. That was number 23, Joe Zapolnik. Doing a good job off the reverse. See here, it looks like you know, somebody has a shot at him, has his uh, shirt. He's able to break away from that. Get some additional yardage up the sideline. Close to the first down, it'll be second and about two. Keith Sapolnik now checking in. The Carlo split top side. Paramana in that gun. Direct snap, Matt Robinson, and he's brought down. And another nice tackle for the Big Reds, and that's from Eli Gillespie, bringing up third and short. That play worked a couple times uh, in the first half on a drive that Central had going uh, late, in the, uh, late in the first half. That direct snap to uh, Robinson was uh, Real positive yardage about uh, two or three times, but here Belair's able to smell it out, uh, hold Robinson to actually a loss of about two to bring up third and four. Terraman in that gun. The Polnick in motion. Looking to set something up for a screen to Robinson, but nothing doing because all over him was Eli Gillespie. Brings up fourth down. Trying to set up a screen to uh, sort of slow down that rush by the Blair uh, front four. They're starting to get more pressure on the quarterback now. This is going to bring up fourth down at about four. And it looks like Central will have to kick the ball away with about 8.17 left to go in the game. And still without Toby Long, that is the Keith Zapolnik. Punt it. It'll take a central bounce and be down to the 21-yard line. They're making some nice rolls on their punts. We'll be back with more from Nelson Field after this. Bel Air in charge, 40 to 20 on the Vapor Jet scoreboard. And we're back at Nelson Field, Vapor Jet scoreboard. Bel Air leads it 40 to 20. As we have eight minutes to go in this one. Hand off. Barnes, short pickup on first down. Nice job by uh, number 43, Matt Robinson. That time was able to play off the block, go laterally downfield or along the line of scrimmage, make the tackle, hold it to a short, short gain of about a yard. It'll bring up second and nine. Zach uh, Kossel now playing as a down tackle. Feller unloads it. Catch is made by Rose. And boy, nice adjustment. The ball thrown behind him, Tyler Rose making the grab. Okay, nice throw also again by Feller. He was under a little bit of heat, didn't have his feet under him. That was almost that was almost all arm right here. And uh, excellent adjustment on the ball by the receiver for a long gain. Brings up first down at about the 47 yard line of Belair. Actually, Coach Zach Hosler is out. He's down here on the sideline. I don't, he did seem like he was shaken up a bit ago. Feller bobbles a snap, hand off Andrew Bobka. Bobka making people miss, and he gets down to the 32-yard line before being brought down and making the tackle, Roland Fletcher. That ball popped up in the air. Uh, if we have it on a replay, we'll be able to see that on the M-Media replay. Ball popped up, and uh, Feller was able to, to get it back and, and hand off to uh, number 21 for Belair. That was Trevor Bobka. Got a real good positive uh, gain 
uh, up inside the 35 yard line of uh, Catholic Central at about the 32. Our new theme song, Football Friday Night, is performed by the Joe Zellick Band, and this new CD is Glad to Be Alive. It's now available at area Walmart on iTunes. Love the tune, very catchy, and it is our theme song for the game of the week this year. And uh, the CD, a good one, a lot of great songs on that from the Ohio Valley Zone, Joe Zellick and Central making a number of replacements, taking their starters, number of starters out defensively. First and 10, Bel Air at the central 32. Mark Elton in there now, Sean Hughes in there at, uh, at a defensive tackle. Jake Kamsky, now the quarterback for the Big Reds. Justin Mosty in there at a defensive end. Tyler Barnes on the carry, taking it to the outside. Barnes ripped down at the 12-yard line. So they're starting to get the corner now, Don. That's about the third time on this drive where they've been able to get outside the uh, containment of uh, Catholic Central for some real positive yardage. They're getting some good blocks on uh, on the uh, the containment for Catholic Central and uh, getting some real, real good yardage once they turn that corner. It'll be a first down. And uh, first down and 10. Bel Air with a timeout. They're in the Hollywood City Center, Center Red Zone. We'll be back for the game of the week after this.